Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It is uh, Sunday, February the 12th, um, sometime in the afternoon. And I just wanted to do a little mid-season check-in, I guess. Um, yeah, right now it's uh, kind of warm and, and crappy out if you're a sledder. Um, luckily, we still have a really good... went for a ride yesterday. It was plus six. So, um, But the trails were amazing, uh, considering you know like the snow we don't have a ton of snow right now and uh the base has held up really really well so we're dipping into some cold weather soon and it looks like about probably between 10 to 12 to 15 centimeters of snow in the next um probably five days so that'll be nice if that hits and uh, if the temperatures are going to stay low and so we might salvage the rest of that it is going to be i'm going to predict uh early ice out because we we didn't have a very good conditions to build a lot of ice this year so we have about half of the lake ice in a lot of spots uh so that's gonna kind of suck but is what it is um yeah anyhow i really wanted to chat about uh, uh a few things uh, one of them was the uh some issues people are having with um with sleds now i kind of covered polaris and stuff before and, um, you know, like they have their, their big ones are the, the brake recall, I believe. And the big ones, of course, the gas tank, the, the, the do not ride order with the gas tank. But it sounds like given the part shortage and, and logistics issues and stuff, it sounds like that they're starting to get on top of that. So, I mean, it sucks for people. I, I know people that, that um, uh, their season's basically screwed because they couldn't ride their sled. Um, and so I know a few people are just like the hell with them riding it anyway. Um, so that sucks. But um, Skidoo has had a few issues and I want to chat just briefly about those. So if you have the sleds affected, you should keep an eye on things. Uh, the first one is uh, the fuel pumps and filters, in-tank filters. Uh, seems this year they're like 22s and 23s i know in the 600 efi forum um or not forum uh it's facebook group that i'm that i'm an admin on there's a lot of reports of people's fuel pumps um crapping out or their fuel filters getting clogged in tank fuel filters getting clogged some within hundreds of miles some within you know within a thousand um and i don't 100 percent know what that's from uh, it sounds like there's a quality control issue with the with the actual fuel cells like with the actual fuel tanks and there's debris or something in them that wasn't cleaned out um prior to them being either shipped to brp or because i mean chances are it's not brp that's building the tanks they send out a spec and a mold and a plastics company you know builds these tanks so um it's looking like there's a quality control issue there and there's debris in the tank or sediment or something and it's clogging up the uh, fuel filters and then causing the pumps to fail. Um, I don't know if there's an actual fuel pump issue, um, but it sounds like a lot of it stems from, from clogged fuel filters. And it seems to not be limited to the 600 EFI. It sounds like I've seen some people uh, on the forum with the uh, the Do Talk forum um, with the 900 Ace and the Turbo Rs and some of the two strokes um, having these issues kind of at a higher rate than would be um, considered statistically normal. <laughs> so uh, keep an eye on it if you've got a new sled. Um, just keep an eye on it if you notice you're gonna you know having misfires and loss of power at higher RPMs and things like that um chances are that's what's going on and and you know like talk to your dealer and get that sorted out um the second kind of major one is with the gen 5 um sleds with the two-piece drive shaft the uh like the shredder the summits that type of thing that have the drive shaft where you can take the drive shaft out without taking the gears out of the gearbox for a track swap or whatever um the um, it seems that with lots of, uh, you know, on off throttle, lots of like shock loading of the track. So, you know, if you're taking a jump 
track spinning, you land, and there's a there's a real shock to the um, to the drive shaft and the gears. On a solid drive shaft, it's not really much of an issue, but on the two piece where it's a splined a splined section that mates with a uh, the gear, uh, there's issues with um, basically stripping the splines off off of that, and it's pretty again definitely widespread um like trail riders may not if you're riding trails most of the time and are kind of you know like easy on your sled you may not be an issue but it again is something to keep an eye on and when it when it goes um it usually takes out the bottom of the chain case with it and so it's not a not a quick fix and and with parts in short supply right now that could screw your season up so uh tki makes a uh, G5 chain case um, fix, drive shaft fix. So just Google TKI um, Gen 5 chain case fix. And um, it's, uh, yeah, it's like an insert that's Loctited in and uh, gives that whole area more integrity. Um, you replace a speed sensor. It, it kind of, uh, when you look at the fix, you're like, it doesn't make much sense that this fixes anything, but it definitely does. So. Uh, a lot of people are starting to run that now and, and it looks like good results. And TKI is a really good company. They make a really kick-ass belt drive. Um, you know, so uh, yeah, so keep an eye on that. And uh, and again, if you've got the, the other thing, which is I think kind of minor, is if you have a Mach Z or a 900 Triple R, just verify what, um, uh, I think secondary and the secondary clutches, just verify what, um, springs, helix, stuff like that came in it because I believe um, there's a, a secondary clutch or a clutching fix for those sleds, um, especially the mocks that were having uh, lower RPM issues. Um, I know there's a uh, there's a recalibration of the clutching on those to kind of give more consistent RPMs. So if you're having problems with like very inconsistent um, RPMs, especially at like full throttle, uh, I would verify with your dealer about that fix. And that should be a technical service bulletin, I believe, um, that, that if you're having issues, you go in and you get it sorted out. So, yeah, I mean, it kind of sucks that, that you know, Skidoo's having these issues. But like I said before, um, all manufacturers have teething issues when new products are, are, are out and um, especially in a line where Skidoo's made a lot of like interesting changes to the Gen 5 and um, yeah so hopefully this doesn't affect people too much and everybody can get their proper fixes and I'm, I'm going to assume that that Skidoo is aware of the drive shaft issue and the fuel tank issue and that stuff will be basically sorted out for for 2024 which we'll find out i guess in a week or two here um further to that like i haven't heard anything about the cat and yamaha sleds i mean they're still running on the pro cross platform and that platform is pretty well shaken down um especially the newest like within the last three years i think they've got the clutching durability issues and the bearing issues and stuff like that mostly sorted out and um, I haven't heard of people having too many problems with those sleds unless you like they boost them to you know much higher horsepower then obviously it's more stress in the drivetrain uh, but I think those are pretty solid sleds now which after you know 10 to 12 years of, of refinement you'd expect them to be a pretty solid product and I'd have no problem um, owning an Arctic Cat or a Yamaha sled uh, today because just like they've got so much that platform is very mature now and uh, you know and lots of people here run them for for trail sleds they make pretty damn good trail sleds so um, yeah that's about it for manufacturer issues um, and I just mainly wanted to touch on the skidoo uh, BRP issues with the sleds this year because um, every year there's always something eh? like it's uh, just that's the way it goes um, and a small update on, on my sled. I had, uh, I had an issue actually, uh, I run alternative impact, um, a arms and the a arms, there's nothing wrong with them. They're bloody awesome. They're a really nice product and uh, at a really good price too, considering like what you get. 
Um, I had a lower, they, they use these um, rose joints here. And this is like a chromoly, um, heim, I guess they call them heim joints, but in Canada they're rose, rose joints. So this is a chromoly rose joint with, um, it's a 5 8 5 8 And uh, it has a, uh, I believe it's a Kevlar um, Teflon coated liner inside. And uh, this is on the lower, the lower A-arm um, where that mounts on the spindle. And uh, mine, I was doing a pre-ride inspection before this last ride yesterday, and I noticed the Kevlar liner was starting to pop out the bottom. So I, gonna, I kept an eye on it, and it didn't move too much from there, but, uh, but it is coming out, and i got to fix that. So these are just really hard to get in Canada. Like, they're very hard to find, and when you do find them, they're usually really expensive. So I ordered... Uh, I ordered uh, a bunch of steel race um, Teflon Teflon lined rose joints for top and bottom, and uh, they're a little bit more durable than these ones are. So so once I get those, I'll I'll replace my bad bad one with this one because I got an extra from from Alternative Impact, and that'll be good for the season. And then in the summertime, I'll swap them all out to the upgraded units um, when I when I do maintenance on the sled. Um, it's going to be a crazy year for maintenance on the sled this year. Uh, so this summer, and I'm going to be doing a series of videos on the XM because uh, we're doing, uh, I didn't actually do any reads or anything this year. Uh, all I inspected mine and my boots were good. My reads were still in really great condition, but I am going to change them out just for, I mean, they're 10 years old now, right? So I'm going to change them out just to, um, for preventative maintenance. So we'll be doing a lot of maintenance on that sled. Uh, there'll be, isoflex in both sides of the motor um complete rebuild uh refresh of both clutches and like i just did them the year prior but still every two years 800s are not easy on clutches so i'm just gonna redo everything in those in those clutches all the drive line bearings um pull the skid check all the bearings in there um uh, as well, I am going to put a C3 synchro drive uh, belt drive on there just because not any performance reason or anything. It's just like something cool to do. And uh, uh, and the reason I did I went with C3 versus TKI is that C3 is a Canadian company. Um, so it's specialty, it's a specialty sled motorsports, a specialty motorsports. And they took over or bought the intellectual property from um, C3. Because C3 uh, Motorsports now just focuses on on um, snow bikes and snow bike conversions and kind of those upgraded higher end parts for that. So the synchro drive for the sleds got moved um, to specialty sled, and so they're going to do those now. But yeah, the nice thing is you can change drive ratios super quick, um, and I'll have a spare belt. So if anything does happen, it's really a 15 minute job to change that to change that belt. And uh, yeah, so. That'll be a cool install, but I'm going to change all the bearings um, just so that everything's fresh in there. And uh, it'll be kind of nice not having to deal with chain case oil and stuff like that and easy inspection on things. Uh, yeah, and then just doing a whole bunch of maintenance on the front end and greasing and just checking, make sure the bushings are in good shape. And I don't think I'm going to send my shocks out for rebuilds this year. I'm, this has been a pretty low mile year for me um and i predict it's you know i'm not going to get a ton more riding in i've got a couple more rides planned but uh not like last year where i rode like twice a week every week non-stop so i think i will just run my shocks next year and then send them in for uh servicing at the end of next year um yeah that's about it and um i think my next trip will be at my in my hometown uh, of Scriber, and I'll be doing a ride there. If everything works out, I'll be going there uh, at the end of the month, doing a ride with um, a bunch of the hometownies and um, on those trails, which are very different than the trails we have here, and uh, riding the Canadian Shield. It's like very rugged and uh, very pretty there. So I'm gonna hoping to get some video um, of that with the new GoPro setup, and uh, yeah, so. That'll probably be the next video.
All right, hope everybody's doing well and having a great winter and uh, hopefully your snow is, uh, is staying on the ground. All right, take care.